Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a revisit on the gear top tent that I started using not that long ago and it started out good and it ended terribly. So this is an update video for all of you who are wondering what do I think of the gear top tent? Stay tuned and we're going to get right into it. Alright, so to get things started, this is the Gear Top Navigator two person tent. You guys have seen this in a more recent upload where I went camping and gear testing in the same night. And I clarified in that video that this is a brand new tent. I've never used it before, I've never tested it. However, with the seasons changing, getting into colder weather, I don't wanna be in my backyard doing these type of videos. I'd much rather be out camping. This time with a brand new tent. So this is a new tent that I just received. I've set it up a number of times at home. And so far it looks good, but instead of doing my testing where the season is kind of running short, we're getting closer to the end of summer and we're gonna be in cold, hot tenting season that time of year. So I'm running short on testing time. So I figured tonight I'll bring a new tent and I'll be testing it and filming an overnighter. So this is a, a unique way for me to share this experience with you guys and hopefully everything goes well. So my testing time was running very short at that particular time. And that's a toss up 50 50 it's either going to go good or it's going to go bad now on that particular camping trip everything went really well the tent was brand new never set up before and it even rained that trip and i stayed totally dry however things quickly took a turn for the worst on the next camping trip so i'm going to pull the tent out of here and i'm going to show you a number of spots where this tent actually failed and it's not just this tent i actually have three other tents from gear top and all three of them have had similar failures absolutely horrible so i'm going to set this up really quickly and show you the key points on where this particular tent failed and i'm going to talk about what happened and roll some footage from that camping trip in this video just to bring you guys up to speed with an update because i don't want to promote a tent that uh, is not gonna be good for you guys, okay? So, and there's more details to come with that as well as some developments with Gear Top and I that we've kind of had in discussion. So I'm gonna get this set up and roll into showing you the failure points and then we're gonna talk more about Gear Top as a company. Okay guys, I've got the tent set up here and I'm just gonna go over some of the key failure points that I've had not only with just this tent, but the other gear top tents that I have, which I'm not going to set up because I'm not comfortable promoting them at all. So usually I do my testing and then I go camping if the tent passed my test. Unfortunately, I was short on time as I already mentioned. So that's a gamble you take when you take new gear out. I never recommend taking new gear out on camping trips. You learn from your mistakes. So I'm gonna go around the tent, bring you guys with me and show you in detail where the failure points were with the specific tent and the kind of challenges that I had to overcome with it because it was very upsetting as I did actually end up losing some camera gear due to water damage. All right guys, so the first failure point is actually four failure points because every single location where these guy ropes hook onto the tent, every single one failed with leaking at the seam. So this gray material is actually sewn underneath of the seam and it holds on to this pole material with this sleeve. And the way it's stitched in, it actually creates an open stitch seam right here and it leaks when it rains. So the very first time I went out with this tent, it did rain and I have an idea of why it didn't leak and I'm gonna explain that very shortly, but I just wanna give you guys a really close look at this and you guys can see for yourself that it is wide open. All right, guys, so here's that close up look at this seam. You guys can see the individual yellow stitches there. This material is folded under and it uh, it just all the rain lands on it and it runs down inside of the stitching and you think that the seam taping would stop that from leaking there's a little bit more to it than that i just want to give you a close look at this this is all open it should have been folded the other way to create a shingling effect however this is wide open to rain so that guy out point that leaks at the front of the tent i had mentioned all four leak everywhere where there's a guy out rope so there's another one right back here there's another one here and then two in the front of the tent. So my thoughts on why this did not leak the first time I went out camping, it was totally brand new. This tent was rolled and folded, super compact and super tight. And I don't believe all the material got a chance to actually open up and relax. 
The second camping trip I went out after stuffing this inside of the stuff sack and sleeping in it all night, the second trip it rained again and that's when these started leaking and everything inside of the tent got wet. I'm talking everything. That is when I lost a microphone and a camera battery due to water damage inside of the floor of the tent. And we're going to talk more about the floor when we do go inside to have a look at some other damage points. But all four of these guy out spots on the tent totally leak rain on the second and even the third trip that I went on because I didn't stop at the second trip. I tried to repair it with some seam sealant and I went back out the third time and I ran into more problems. All right, so moving up to the front of the tent, just before we do make our way inside, I do want to kind of flop this up top so you guys can have a really good look inside of the tent. But before doing that, I want to point out the second failure point. This strapping right here where the peg goes in to hold out this vestibule portion of the tent, this webbing material I have since fixed. However, it totally ripped off while I was setting up the tent. I did not pull on it very hard and the stitching actually ripped right out of the seam. Now, like I said, I fixed it since then, ran it through the sewing machine at home. But after inspecting this one and fixing it, I actually found another one on the back side of the tent that guys out the tent that actually was just about to let go as well. So the stitching on these guy out points are not very good. All right, so moving inside of the vestibule just before I pull this back, if you guys look closely down here, there is a buckle. It's a plastic buckle on some webbing strap. And that is how the inner tent can be fixed and detached. This buckle totally let go. This actually ripped out of the tent body and it wasn't pulled tight. It just totally ripped out. I'm not exactly sure how it failed. Now I have fixed that as well with a needle and thread, but that is not something that should let go. I mean, that is some pretty heavy stitching down there or it should be heavy stitching. And pulling that in nice and gently is enough to hold the tent body open, just like every other backpacking tent that has a removable inner. That should not let go. Now, the strapping on the floor did hold together. These did not fail at all, which is really good because that kind of tells you how wide to pitch the tent. But there are a lot of key points on here that the stitching is just not strong on. And that was one of them that let go. Now, unfortunately, I had to fix it when I got home. The good thing is with that detached, it didn't really prevent me from camping. It was just a nuisance in having that let go. And if you're gonna be paying money for a tent, these silly little things should not be happening. So already we're at one, two, three, four repairs on this tent that I've had to make, and there's more. All right, so for this next failure point, this is kind of a critical thing that I consider to be rather important. It's gonna be a little hard to show here because it's just the way uh, that the camera set up and everything but on the inner there are these plastic loops and they're stitched into this material we then have this really dainty thin elastic and those toggles go into that just like that to hold the inner tent now that's nothing new most backpacking tents hook up the exact same way the problem is i had to replace not one not two three three of these elastic toggles because not because of the stitching but because of the elastic material literally like disintegrated. It was almost like the, the elastic in like a, an old pair of boxer shorts that you pull it too much and it just disintegrates and falls apart. Three of these totally disintegrated and fell apart. Now I've replaced them except for one that is actually missing. I never even noticed this on the first camping trip. On the second trip, I noticed it because I thought that I missed it. And on the third trip, I just said, F it. I'm not even going to bother fixing it. This tent has too many failures. I'm not going to fix it. But if you guys look way back here, there is a loop. So instead of putting a toggle on it, they put a plastic ring to a plastic ring. Well, how are we going to put two plastic rings together? It doesn't work that way. It needs an actual toggle. It needs one of these little T-shaped toggles to go in to the hole. Well, way back here, they fixed a plastic ring to a plastic ring. It's impossible to connect. Now, that's kind of a minor detail. Obviously, it's still working. It worked for two camping trips and the third camping trip. But that's kind of an oversight. To me, that's an oversight. And, I mean, the tent should be marked down way cheaper than it actually is. If not, not even sold at all until the issues are fixed because there are too many issues. Now, talking about the tent leaking, I want to show you inside, if I can get the camera, camera positioned in here, exactly where the leaking from the outside took place on the inside. All right, guys, before I move into the top of the tent where it's leaking, 
this is really bugging me and I want to show you guys this up close. So here we have the plastic loop that hooks onto the inner tent. Down here we can see there's a toggle and a loop. Coming up on the inner tent, there is literally this plastic ring. I mean, how do we get that to connect to there? It just doesn't even make sense. And I don't know how that got past quality control, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. That just irks me. It really bothers me that that was missed. All right, so moving inside of the tent and looking up at the roof area where this seam failed. So on the outside of this seam, this is seam tape. So this is actually waterproofed pretty, pretty decently. However, on the underside, there is no seam tape at all down this entire seam. And that, if you guys can see the shadow from the outside, that's exactly where that guy out point is to guy out the tent. So that is the failure point right there. No seam taping down this entire seam at all. And that is the same in all four corners where the guy out locations are. Only one seam's taped, the other side is totally exposed to all rainwater. All right guys, so that is a number of issues that I found, not just with this tent from Gear Top, but three other tents from Gear Top as well and they're all similar problems just little minute details like the toggles being the wrong toggles uh, some of these strappings letting go but there are some major issues with the leaking i lost a camera microphone and a camera battery i could not finish filming my overnight adventure nor was i even interested in finish filming it because my entire sleep system was totally soaked. My sleeping bag was wet. I was so angry. I just, I wanted to get out of there and I wanted to go home. Now there is one more thing with the inside, the floor. So where the floor does not have any actual seams on it, I'm not sure if this silicone coating is just inconsistent, but after setting it down on the ground for two days in my backyard, after the third camping trip, I wanted to find out what was going on. And I set this out here for two days in the wet and there were wet spots that actually started seeping into the material, showing me that once this material was actually saturated in water for a long period of time, it was leaking and it wasn't consistent. It was actually little blotches all over the place that were leaking. So that tells me that this siliconized, um, whatever you want to call it, like that, that coating that's on the inside here, it's not consistent. It's, it's, it's blotchy, it's, I don't know what it is, but I've seen this before in really, really budget tents but this tent's not really priced at a ultra budget level. I want to say it's probably around the $280 to $300 range Canadian. That should not be the price for a tent that has this many issues, as well as the other tents that I have from the company. That's just the issues are all over the place. Quality control is terrible. Now there is also more information that I'm going to share to you, and this is more to do with the company and how they treated me. All right, so now that we've taken a look at the tent and all the failure points that A, I've had to fix, or B, are just completely ridiculous, I want to talk about how the company treated me. So, I have four tents from this company, and three of them were sent to me. One I purchased with my own money. This particular tent was supposed to be reviewed, and I cannot film a positive review on a product that is just inferior. Number one, I only show products that are good on my channel, products that I personally approve of and products that I use. I never take a script and I never take what a company tells me to do ever. I do exactly what I want, how I want, and regular viewers, you guys know the scoop on Lone Wolf 902. We do not take fluff from companies. I work with companies that I like and the ones I don't like, see you later, I don't mess with them. Gear top took things for a wrong turn. So I had addressed them with the quality issues and told them that I was not able to do a positive review video on this tent. What did they do? They stole my camping video. They actually stole 15 to 16 minutes of my video with my watermark in it and stole my photo, all my copyrighted content and made their own video on their own YouTube channel and uploaded it. It was live for two weeks and they never asked me at all. They never sent me a message, nothing. So I had basically forgotten about the tent. I said, I'm not gonna film it. I let them know I'm not gonna do the review. And then I find it on YouTube. One of the subscribers, one of you generous individuals sent me the link and said, hey, they stole your content. And I checked it out and I went, what is going on? So I messaged them and I said, listen, you stole my video and my photo after I told you I don't wanna be associated with this tent. Now I had already had it in my mind that I was going to do an updated video 
just just clarifying it because you guys deserve that much if i do show a product on the channel it is generally after i do my testing as i've already mentioned before i was on a crunch with this tent i wanted to do the testing and the camping before the review so i have not filmed the review for this tent yet this you could take this as my review and what i say to the tent is it sucks it is horrible. It started out really good and I had such a great camping trip that night in the rain. The tent performed really well. But like I said, when you get this material, you can even see some of the creases that are still in here with the pole bag. When you get tents that are rolled up really nice and tight, there are a lot of creases and those folds and seams on the tent, they're even compressed more. So when you get out for the first time, chances are if they do leak, if it is a leaky tent, it's not going to happen on the first time. Sometimes it might not even happen the second trip. It's usually the third or fourth trip after you cram it in the stuff stack and it gets ruffled up that things really loosen up and that's when the failures start to come out. The first trip, it went totally fine. I was actually really happy for it. The second trip is where things took a turn. It leaked. I've had pieces fall off, elastic disintegrate. It was terrible. So I ended up having a conversation with Geartop and explain to them that they stole my content, it was copyrighted, I didn't give them permission to do so, and they argued with me, telling me that no, they left my logo there, so it was okay for them to steal my copyrighted content and use it for marketing purposes and generate profit off of it without even asking me. So what I did is I put a copyright claim through uh, YouTube and they ended up removing the video and that got their attention and they started this huge argument with me trying to bribe me with sleeping bags and other tents and I said no I'm not interested what I did is I ended up giving them my core charge because I am a photographer I said listen you chewed up three days of my time I'm going to charge you for my photography rate for a day which is a set number of what I charge for photography rate which is totally fine they stole my content the tent failed I lost camera gear in it and they still wouldn't even agree to that they kept offering me free sleeping bags and free tents and I said no so this is a message not only for YouTubers out there and consumers, Gear Top is horrible quality. And I'm not saying that because of my personal falling out with them, but the failures happened well before that, okay? So the tents failed. I'm not gonna show the other three because I do not promote negative products. And if I do come across a negative product, I always do an update video letting you guys know what has happened and that I'm not supporting that product. Okay, just like the climate sleeping pads, I made a video on that and I talked about how they are good pads. However, they fall short with the misadvertisement of the high R value and the lack of warmth that I've had on those pads. So I will make updated videos if I have issues with products because I do not want to be associated with advertising products that do not work. Okay, I have a very strict guideline of what I want to hold myself to. I am 100% agenda free. I do not do affiliate links. I don't do promo codes. I don't do any of that crap that other review channels do. I get zero dollars for my review videos. I do the review videos specifically for you guys to find gear and it helps me answer a lot of questions in the comment section by giving you guys a review video link instead of being in the comment section answering the exact same questions all the time. So horrible tent, horrible tent in my personal opinion, horrible company. The fact that I would not roll over and basically give them a positive review lying to you guys which I'm not going to do they stole my video content and made their own video out of me in my own video which was taken down from YouTube and I filed another copyright strike against them as well so this is the update video unfortunately I have to sit in my backyard making this nonsense video when I could be out in the woods camping so this is my kind of um extended uh thank you to you guys basically you guys reported it to me you guys are really great to me in on the channel in the comment section and on instagram as well so whenever i have problems i'm going to be totally upfront with you guys and give you guys the inside scoop because that's what we do on lone wolf 902 we do things my way not the way the companies tell me to do things so hopefully this video was helpful to you guys if you have any questions at all drop it down in the comment section peace out and i'll see you in the next video hopefully out in the woods camping